I will now share my experience at Seattle Academy. Please bear in mind these are my lived experiences. To be told that I'm radical was an adjective I did not want to be associated with. Coming from a predominantly white environment, being radical meant I was too black, too aware of my surroundings, and too aware of assimilation. Radicalism was the very antithesis of the accepted to thrive in such an environment. I could not question, I could only act. Raise my pitch, smile more, have a friendly demeanor, and never bring up race. It was a Saturday at my last speech tournament when my partner and I found out we qualified for the final round. Of course we were excited until we arrived at the room and I saw these chunky red heels. Now these heels and I have a pass. Previously, I saw the girl attached to these heels perform a modern day interpretation of a minstrel show, followed by howls of laughter from the audience and judges. But back to this moment, somehow we got onto the topic of success. Red Heels turned towards me and said, unlike you, I don't have to claim I'm a minority. She's white, in case anyone was wondering, but let me break down the statement that she made. Unlike you, I don't have to claim I'm a minority to attain success. She implied that I am not capable of attaining similar success. She discredited my hard work, ambition, intelligence, and passion because I don't deserve to receive the same accolades that she does as a white person. In her eyes, I only achieved success because the white moderate took pity on the innate incapabilities I possess as a black person. She said I didn't belong with the whites. No, no, I belonged with the blacks. I've heard things like this since I was two years old. Yet every day I was expected to walk into class, all ears awaiting my words of reassurance that racism had died in the 60s, that MLK had a dream, we've had a black president, and we are all equal. I only existed to provide comfort and simplicity to an uncomfortable, complex system. A year ago, we were given the assignment to analyze James Baldwin's The Creative Process. Baldwin wrote that society's role was to see through rose-colored glasses and recount our fairy tales, while the artist's responsibility was to explore the cracked foundations and become friends with our boogeymen. My classmates and I fell in love with the idea of the artist, the illuminator and freedom fighter. The artist was aware of his environment, aware of the false truths, and aware of the hatred. Yet, he continued to revise our stories, add new brushstrokes to our history, and supply the correct lens for our eyesight. In reading Baldwin now, I began to realize the code in which he wrote to appeal to the white moderate. To incite the agents of change, he couldn't say radical or extremist because of the implied definitions of the words. Instead, he found overlooked linguistic similarities between the Black American and white moderate. From there, he created a wanted definition before a bias-filled word. Baldwin created a code-switched radical he wasn't aggressive, no, no, he was passionate. He wasn't critical, he was thoughtful. From all of this, I truly began to realize how context and environment change our perceptions of neutral words. To be radical at a predominantly white institution like SAS is simply me existing. To be radical is to be a person with a voice. To be the artist is to be a person with a voice, a trait we all possess, yet one is preferred to another. The artist strayed from perspective challenging characteristics from either side and created a definition filled with neutral words, a universal truth of change. As nothing will remain the same from a grain of sand moved in the Sahara Desert to the value attached by the dominant culture to the black body.
we will continue to say the names of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, Sean Reed, Rayshard Brooks, Tamir Rice, who was a fellow member of the class of 2020, and other victims of police brutality because their skin was seen as a threat. So I ask you, the class of 2020, to become the artist, sign the petitions, donate safely, protest, and do so with empathy rather than guilt or because it is a trend to recognize that Black lives matter too. And to the allies, remember to be an ally. You are standing with us or behind us, not in front of us. You are there to provide support, not to overshadow with your own agenda. So I ask you all to do this so that another parent sister, brother, friends, or child's last words are not, I can't breathe. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2020. We are going back to Connor in the studio.